G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing my draft series where I take one player and I sort of react to their highlights and give you my thoughts on their overall game. So uh, if you've been watching the previous ones, I've done one on Clay Hall from Western Australia, I've done Colby McKercher from Tasmania, and today I'm going to be doing young Daniel Curtin, who uh, at times has been considered a top three prospect in this year's draft, but it seems like in recent times he's going to slide potentially closer towards the uh, lower part of the top 10, but it really depends on which clubs have which pick, bearing in mind there could be live trades as well, and different clubs have different needs. So Daniel Curtin is an interesting one. I remember hearing about him 12 months ago. He played in the Futures game, uh, which is the Curtin Razor game uh, before the grand final. He played as a 17-year-old, a bottom major, and he played key forward, if I'm not mistaken, and kicked five goals. So that was what the time that I first heard of Daniel Curtin as a potential key forward in this year's draft. A lot's changed since then. He went back to his more... Um, comfortable position, I guess, as a key back. He was more uh, a key back who played key forward in that game. He doubled down uh, playing as a key defender for Claremont, but at times throughout this year, also made the move into the midfield at times for both Claremont in the Colts competition and Western Australia at the Under-18s Championship. So, Kurt Curtin is a really interesting prospect. He's 197 centimeters and a whopping 95 kilos. So, he is a big boy. And if he does become a midfielder, hypothetically, he would be the biggest midfield in the competition. He'd be taller than Patrick Cripps. So what I'm going to do in this video, as I have done in the previous ones, is uh, watch his highlights. Thank you to the YouTube channel Footy Stuff. It's a combination of AFL.com highlights as well as Footy Stuff's YouTube channel. It's a channel I've shouted out before, so go check it out if you want some under-18s draft content. When I say content, I mean the highlights, but not just the highlights. They show you pretty much every possession that that player gets, which gives you a much more well-rounded view of a player's game. Before we crack in with the Daniel Curtin highlights, I've got three games to react to, or at least one of them is a compilation of his uh, championships performance. But before I start watching them, if you could take a moment to subscribe to the channel, that'd be much appreciated. Cool, so here we are. The first video is reacting to him playing at the under-18s championships. So that's a, you got to get a feel for the level. He's playing against, you know, the best under 18s from across the country. Number 30 there collects confidently and gets a bit of a rushed handball away. So yeah, as you can see here, playing in defense sort of affects a spoil, I think, and gets the handball off. That is a nice kick. So he's got a nice kicking technique for a big man. Um, I know that not just from one kick, but from watching him previously. He's a very good ball user. And as you can see there, intercepts the play, wheels around onto his left, has a lot of confidence in it, um, but just a short chip to a teammate there. Oh, and the run and collect is nice. So as you can see for a big man, um, he does provide a bit of run and carry, which is why he probably wants to play a bit more higher up the ground. Oh, that was nice. So showing a bit of agility there and confidence as well, getting past a couple of would-be tacklers. Getting back well there to intercept, doesn't quite, or doesn't get paid the mark, it was spoiled. A strong tackle in the middle of the ground there too. Just involved in some link-up play. Oh, we saw that footage before from the Clay Hall video. Right, receives the ball back. Yeah, nice. So a little bit of a burst of pace there. I don't know how uh, fast he tests, but uh, that one step got him a little bit of separation there. And he's not, he's not afraid to take the game on, as you can see. But we will also bear in mind the fact that he is much bigger than a lot of the kids he's played against here. But... A little bit of evasiveness we can see there for a big man. Strong tackle laid there. Okay, so yeah, we're seeing routinely he's uh, doing well to nail some tackles. He's not a bad tackler. Uh, now we can see him at the center of the ground. Wins the clearance. Yeah, there's definitely pace there. Gets a nice handball off. So we can see a balance here between playing in defense and playing at the ball drop here. Yeah, nice tidy kick. Again, loves to sell the dummy and gain an extra 10 meters. So kind of plays a little bit like a halfback flanker in that sense. Good follow up there, attack on the footy, bit of a fend off, decent handball. Uh, I mean, I'm critiquing his technique there. Considering it was rushed, it was okay. Jeez, like the amount of times people have fallen for him um, faking going on his right, and then him going to his left. That's a nice view of the kick there, because you get the real, like, broad angled like, lens. That was a really nice kick there. 
Where is he here? Good strong mark in a pack situation. Okay, so showing some overhead ability in a contested situation. Wheels around, open space up. Another fake, another fake, and he drives the ball inside 50. So uh, he's also qu he's quite attacking for a key defender as well. I don't know what to call him anymore. I don't know if we would call him a key defender as such. But the way he takes the game on with his decisions as well, so deciding to run around a player, deciding to fake out, get that extra 10 meters, and put the ball in attacking situations. This is a great goal. So if you look at the score here, this is a clutch moment late in the game. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the time because I've probably got my face in front of it, but it's, it's the dying minutes of this game against Vic Country, and that goal put them two points down. I'm pretty sure they lost the game anyway, but uh, a very, very good clutch moment for a player who is not recognized as a forward. Does well there to find a target after slipping over. So, so far, we haven't seen him mess up yet. I don't think, I think this is legitimately just highlights to be fair. Um, the other videos we're going to watch of him are, they're going to be, you know, every possession he gets. So again, here he is at the coal face, gets the clearance. Oh, fakes him out and he misses that one. I'm pretty sure that would have been such a nice moment for Daniel Curtin. Had he kicked it, obviously. A little bit of leg speed there. Good intercept mark there, read the ball well. So he's, we can see some genuine versatility. Obviously, these are just highlights, but he's winning clearances. He's not really getting caught too much. Again, they are just highlights, though. Okay, so what do we see there? We saw, I think, really good foot skills and a nice little burst of pace. Again, he's confidently taking players on, but you factor in the fact that he is so much bigger than these other under-18 kids. Um, it will be not necessarily something he can rely on at the next level. So uh, we'll keep watching the next video. Okay, so here we are. This is him playing against the grown men's VFL side, okay? So another step up in competition. Uh, this is against Carlton's VFL team. Uh, I presume he's playing in the back line in this game. He's number 29, and uh, the young All-Australians actually won this game, which is quite an achievement. So we see him fly high for a mark. Doesn't quite bring it down. And we see him mopping up at the back line. So yeah, uh, absolutely playing as a key defender in this particular game. Gets the ball to Harley Reid. To Sanders, pretty star-studded team this one, isn't it? That's a good grab in a contested situation. Flies high for the mark against a smaller opponent, but still, good mark. And uh, interesting decision there. Wasn't the safest switch, but he is a good kick. Gets the spoil, gathers it almost, fumbles it. That's him, 29, he's the one who kicked it. And a nice release kick there to uh, release some of the pressure. So a lot of back half football, a lot of uncontested stuff other than a few marks. That is a bad kick. That was uh, poor execution. But um, generally his foot skills have been good. Where is he here? Okay, so yeah, it makes up some reasonable ground there. Again, he is a big guy. And somebody just gets the uh, handball off. Not sure who that was for Carlton. Oh, Harley Reid this time taking the ball out of the uh, back half. They combine. Jeez, Harley Reid's good, isn't he? You probably didn't know that. Harley Reid is a good player. Yep, nice spoil there. That's that's the first spoiling highlight we've seen, I think, or maybe the second. Here he is at the stoppage situation. Oh, there, no, there he is. That's his first possession in the chain. And a, a nice accurate kick, considering uh, Falstrup had someone on, on his hammer. Oh dear. Oh dear, he's played on, that was a behind. <laughs> Where is he here? Oh, it doesn't get anywhere near the aerial contest, interestingly there. But defends well, gathers the ball, keeps it in play. That is a bad handball. <laughs> oh dear. To be fair, it's um, he is playing against grown men here. He's going to make mistakes. Again, so we're seeing a lot of uh, loose sort of backline play as well, as you'd expect. So he does accumulate it. He's got the skills to affect switches. I like that he's daring. In this particular game, he's probably made a couple of questionable decisions. But again, we are being critical here. Okay, so this is the third of three videos. This time, this is actually his senior waffle debut for Claremont. So we're gonna watch this. Again, bearing in mind, he's once again playing against uh, grown men. And uh, then at the end, we're gonna go through some summary thoughts. 
Where is he there? I think uh, I think all he did there was get the quick gather and handball. This is his debut. Good pressure there on the ball carrier. Gets the kick off. It's a turnover, but uh, yeah, tough on that one. Where is he there? See, he's a big boy. Really big guy. Gets the spoil, forces the contest, then gets back in. Solid effort there. So again, this is his first game at the level here, so he's probably going to be a little bit more conservative, but that was a nice run there. Oh, this is an important kick. It was, it was brave. It was a brave decision there. Does well to uh, stop the mark, and uh, yeah, they can see the rush behind there. Nice. The handball was just a little bit off. It was a nice idea, but the execution was just centimeters off. Again, first game at the level. As you can see down the bottom right, he gets 21 possessions as a sort of almost loose, tall defender, if that makes sense. Mind you, not playing too loose. He's had a few one-on-one -on -one contests. Hmm, opting to go backwards and sideways there. He'd fill in well at West Coast. Oh, does well. Again, that is some... That's a great effort considering, like I said, he's playing against grown men here. Throws off a would-be tackler. He's not going to be able to do that in season one of the AFL, but you give it a few years and this guy is going to be a hard man to bring down in a tackle. Looks like he's growing in confidence a little bit as this game progresses. Absorbs the tackle, gets a handball out. That's nice. It's nice to do that at, um, you know, Waffle Senior level in your first game. Doesn't actually get his hands on that one, but he runs out of defense. So run and carry. So defensive aerially, um, even though he didn't have a massive impact on that aerial contest, he uh, drove the ball forward about 60 meters with that kick. Oh, oh, a little too casual there. Didn't realize the pressure behind him, but again, probably just a step up in pace. Um, but again, you can see the confidence. He just takes that extra second. It's a long kick. It, it hit the target. It hit the target. Fair play to him. That's a nice kick. Hit the ball pretty well. It just kind of bounced before it got to the target. But uh, you can tell the trajectory of his kicks, like I've said with a couple of the other players I've reviewed so far. He hits the ball very nicely. A couple of times he's miscued it, but it didn't really matter there. Where is he here? Okay, he's a handball receive. Waits a second before releasing it to advantage. Nicely done. This is a very solid debut, to be fair. Again, takes the player on. Shrugs off a tackle. He's got a nice balance of like pace and, and size as well. He's obviously not getting pushed off the ball as a 18-year-old. Nice spoil there. Kind of was only two Claremont players that rose for it, but that's all right. Here he is on the center wing. Yeah, nice idea. There, there weren't really too many options. He, he chose the most attacking one. Mind you, he gets the ball back here. And he's hit that very nicely. Okay, so a little bit of a iffy decision. It was a brave decision. Um, East Fremantle intercepted it. He won the ball back and then hit a target really nicely. Oh, was that in the forward line or the back line? I'm not too sure what happened there. Accumulates a bit of possession. Siren goes. We don't know how that kick turned out. Okay, so now we've got a bit of a taste of Daniel Curtin and what he's capable of. So what we saw there is, you know, mixed highlights but hit between him playing as a key defender. We saw him play a little bit in the midfield. And we saw him kind of running off the half-back line with a bit of run and carry there. So he's versatile. I guess my concerns with Curtin are what position does he play at AFL level? Is there genuine midfield potential? Well, we haven't seen an extended run of form of him in the midfield. We saw him play there in the championships with reasonable effect. I suppose with Curtin, what you're really picking on is the potential for him to become maybe not a Bontempelli, but in the uh, in the similar vein as Bontempelli, as this huge, hulking, oversized midfielder. Um, there's reasonable pace there. He's hard to tackle, and he hits the ball well. And he's also not afraid of the goals. So I do see a lot of raw talent with Curtin. I think the tricky thing with him will be clubs deciding, are we picking a midfielder with this pick, or are we picking a key defender? Because at the moment, he could turn out to be neither. He could turn out to be like a running halfback. So while there's great attributes there, there's some great versatility, and I think he's going to be a good AFL player 
regardless. Is he kind of jack of all trades, master of none at this current stage? Is he project as an A grade midfielder? Does he project as an A grade key back? I'm not really too sure on either of those yet, but he seems to play all of those positions pretty well. And he's got AFL traits, skills, great athleticism, pretty quick for a big guy, hard to tackle. Again, this might be why he, he might slide down past at the top five. You know, there's links to West Coast, obviously, if they end up with a pick other than pick one. But other than that, it depends what clubs are willing to take a punt on. Because again, he's not a true key defender in my eyes. He's also not a true midfielder. But you got to pick on potential sometimes. And he, you do see a lot of raw potential there with Daniel Curtin. So anyway, those are my thoughts on Curtin. Um, you know, if there is a scenario where West Coast don't have pick one and we have two and six, hypothetically, I'd be very, very happy to land this kid. He's not a player that I would take with pick two outright, but if West Coast hypothetically had two and three, then I would happily take him with pick three. But anyway, guys, those are just my thoughts. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Daniel Curtin and where do you think he will end up on draft night. As always, I appreciate all your support. Subscribe to the channel for more draft content and a variety of other AFL content. And for now, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.